If you're not fully up to date with this series already, check out the playlist link in the top right of the video right now. So it was finally time for the big match. Sheffield United against Nottingham Forest in the semi-finals of the 2022 playoff finals. So this is a game that has happened before. In 2003, Forest played Sheffield United en route to Forest being knocked out. Sheffield United went on to lose the final against Wolverhampton Wanderers, but there is still a lot of history that lingers around that fixture present in both clubs. Brennan Johnson's father, David Johnson, actually put Forest 1-0 up in the first leg of that semi-final, so he'll be hoping to do similar in today's match. There are also quite a lot of links between Sheffield United and Nottingham Forest. You can see in their first team, Ben Osborne and Oliver Burke are both former Reds, and on the bench, Jack Robinson, Luke Freeman and David McGoldrick all also played for Nottingham Forest. Sheffield United are playing the classic 4-2-3-1 formation, with Oliver Burke playing behind McBurney in an all-Scottish strike force. Morgan Gibbs-White would play on the wing to try and nullify the attacking threat of Max Lowe, who Forrest bought on full permanent deal in January from Sheffield United. Forrest's formation is the one they've been playing all season. They haven't really got too many former Sheffield United players in there other than Max Lowe, but it's the classic 5-2-3 formation with Brennan Johnson, Keenan Davies and Philip Zinkenagel all playing at front. Ignore the yellow cards because the playoffs do not carry over suspensions, so Forrest will need to either get a red card or two yellow cards to have any player missing for the final. With the pre-match huddle complete, it was time for the football to begin at Bramall Lane and Forrest were hoping to get an early goal to take them into the lead. Burke got things kicked off and before we knew it, we were in the 16th minute. Sheffield United had kind of dominated the ball for the first 15 minutes, with Bogle and Gibbs White especially being dominant down the right. Gibbs White was good here, he saw McBurney and then Burke forced a good save against Bree Samba. But Forrest knew they could counter, and counter they did after 20 minutes. Brennan Johnson got away from a last ditch slide tackle before slotting it in perfectly, an exact replica of the goal his dad scored 20 years ago, with him placing it past the goalkeeper to put Forrest 1-0 up. Sheffield United were not deterred though. The pure pace that every Forest fan knows Oliver Burke has was deployed, Gibbs White was playing more of an infielder and again Sander Berger with a good powerful shot, but good save from Samba as you would expect from that distance. Speaking of powerful, you know Keenan Davis is always going to be able to run and hold people off. Brennan Johnson was cutting inside and managed to get it off to Davis, who unleashed a fierce effort onto the crossbar. It nearly was 2-0, and if you got 2-0 up in the first half an hour, you have to say the tie is almost over. But as it stood, the blades were still in it. Former Forest man Ben Osborne ran down the wing with a good tackle from Joe Worrell, forcing it out for a throw-in. And that was the sort of thing Forrest needed to do. Lots of good individual defending actions. However, some poor defending saw Oliver McBurney smash in a powerful header from a looped cross in, and you could see how furious Steve Cooper was. His team had the semi-final in the palm of their hand and they've let it slip and are gonna go in at half time, just 1-1. Ghana tried to do a couple of long shots, but they kept getting blocked. It was dogged defending from Sheffield United, and that's exactly how it went in level at half time. There wasn't actually too much action until the 77th minute, when Sheffield United were on the ball, but Keenan Davies won it after a rebound off James Garner. Brennan Johnson tried to get away, but it was good play from Sander Berger, and again, another good individual defending action. Forrest were again attacking in a very similar way down the wing. This time Brennan Johnson managed to beat his man and found Philip Zinkenagel. He beat his man as well, but the shot bounced off John Egan for a corner. Forrest of course have been lethal off corners and McKenna was the target, but again Egan got there just ahead of McKenna and Forrest's attempt to recycle the ball didn't really come to anything, with Bogle just about getting there and knocking that off Brennan Johnson for a goal kick. With the match about to end, Sheffield United had one final chance. Gibbs White and Bogle yet again linking up as they had been the entire match. A good turn from him, Burke found Mousset, and what a save from Bree Samba, palming it onto the post, making sure that Forrest would be heading to the city ground with a 1-1 match. Brennan Johnson won the Nottingham Forest Man of the Match award, but really I think it should have gone to Bree Samba. The captain had saved Forrest Bacon on multiple occasions, and with no away goals, it didn't really matter that Forrest had scored away from home. It was all going to be settled in the next match, only three days later, at the city ground in Nottingham. 
the match came around absolutely rapidly. With all the pre-match attention being on Brennan Johnson, it was the fans' turn to show that they had the passion and intensity to cheer on their boys to Wembley for the first time since 1993. With every single fan holding up the TIFO and a massive image of Bree Samba behind the goal he'll be keeping the ball out of showed that every single fan was up for this game. And it didn't take long for Sheffield United to show that they were more intense in this match as well. Brennan Johnson got tackled heavily and only took a couple of passes for Sheffield United to get their first chance on goal. With only six minutes on the clock, Oliver Burke blasted a good chance wide and it was nearly an early scare for Nottingham Forest at home in a match they really could not afford to mess up. Sheffield United did nearly make a mistake of their own, with them passing it straight to Brennan Johnson who couldn't quite get it under control and Robin Olsen just keeping the ball in the box. But it was Keenan Davies who needed no luck. It was no mistake when this powerful drive found the top corner. What a hit it was. He celebrated wildly, headbutting over the post and Forest fans knew this could be their year. 1-0 up at home and dominating possession and chances, it was all looking likely that Forest would go on to win this. With all the fans being behind Forrest, Brennan Johnson could inside from the right wing. He tried to beat his man a couple of times, but unfortunately got tackled by Ender Stevens. However, it was time for Forrest to show some intensity of their own, with a massive hit on their style man Morgan Gibbs-White, showing that Forrest were up for this game just as much as United. It was a deep cross that bounced in the box that was the next chance for Sheffield United, but unfortunately for them, no one was there to slot in the easy chance. Oli Burke had another drive, but this time much less powerful and more accurate. Ben Osborne tried to twist his way into the box, so did Ender Stevens, but it was Mousset, Sander Berg and Oliver Burke yet again who had the next chance. Another good block from Joe Worrell. There was a shout for a penalty, but it was never going to get given in a game of this intensity. There was only one real moment of quality in this first half, so let's have another look at it again. It was Keenan Davis' blast from the edge of the box, finding the top corner. What a goal, definitely one of the most important goals Forrest have scored for a long while, and could be one of the goal of the season contenders. Samba managed to roll it out just before half time, with Brennan Johnson looking to take on his man. Opting to pass instead, Keenan Davis used some of his strength to almost blast into a very similar position to his goal, but this time he was blocked professionally by the Sheffield United defence. With half time passed, Forrest were just 45 minutes away from Wembley. However, it did not start very well, Mousset forcing an early save from Samba after just two minutes of the second half. With both a height and strength advantage, Forrest could feel confident defending any corners, but Spence's clearance was poor. Burke managed to bounce the ball over to Sander Berger, who threaded it through to Mousset, who forced a decent double save from Bree Samba. With Samba keeping them in it at one end, it was up to Davis and Johnson to try and get them ahead at the other. Zinkanago managed to find Keenan Davis, who turned well, had one shot, had two shots, and Brennan Johnson couldn't quite get to the third ahead of Ender Stevens' acrobatic clearance. With only half an hour to go, Forrest decided it was time to push on to try and get the second goal to secure the tie. However, this left Connor Hurahan open in the middle of the goal, and it was only Bree Samba who managed to keep the ball out of the net. With Forrest trying to press, it saw five different players be drawn to Mousset and no one marking Gibbs White, who then found Hurahan open one on one and there was definitely nothing Samba could do about that one. With the game now level, it was Forrest's turn to try and regain the lead. It was Brennan Johnson who had the next chance, smashing the ball onto the post. Zingarago tried to do a nice recycle of the ball, getting it in. Johnson had another shot, this time smashing Egan point blank. Luckily did not come off his hand for the Sheffield United man. Only a few minutes later, Forrest would have a sixth corner of the game. Yates managed to win it before it eventually bounced out to Callum Styles, who got taken out on the edge of the box by Sander Berger. It was Philip Zingarago who put the ball down and he was deciding he was going to cross it in. With a nice chip, it was Keenan Davis who rose highest. He won the header, but it got palmed over the bar. It was another good chance for Forrest, but unfortunately couldn't quite finish them off. Max Lowe managed to get the ball, Carvalho coming on in one of his last ever games for Forrest after agreeing a transfer, and Styles again hit the crossbar. There were so many chances where Forrest had hit the woodwork in this game that they must have felt that their look was really not on their side. Some really good chances as well, but thankfully for Forrest, they didn't concede this late last one that Sheffield United had towards the end of the half. 
so it was going to be extra time, and there was going to be an early chance in the game as well. Oyeda got muscled off the ball by Oliver Burke before Rian Brewster, the substitute, came on and flicked it over to Luke Freeman, ex Forest Flair. It was another good save from Bree Samba. The first half of extra time was all Sheffield United. No matter what Forrest tried to do, there was always a Sander Berger or an Oliver Norwood or an Oliver Burke in the way trying to get the ball off them. In fact, it was another chance at the end of the first half that had Samba saving yet another great shot, this time from Rianne Brewster. After dominating normal time, Forrest seemed like they had used up all their energy. With them dominating the first half of extra time, Sheffield United were looking to go for the win, but they wouldn't have a chance until right at the very end. Bogle found Gibbs White. Gibbs White found Bogle again. This time he was open in space, but McKenna just got across fast enough to block it. With the second half of extra time just about to finish, it was a good defensive header from McKenna, and then Forrest would have one last chance. It was Brennan Johnson up against tired and slow defenders, but Ender Stevens just about got in the way to block it, and that meant it was going to penalties. While the Forest manager decided who he wanted to take penalties, he decided Brennan Johnson was a pretty good first opener, he wanted Callum Styles in there, he wanted Keenan Davies in there, he wanted Forest fans Ryan Yates and Joe Worrell to potentially be taking sudden death ones, and he knew exactly where every single one of these needed to go. First up was Brennan Johnson. He decided to go with power, and he found the top corner. No way Olsen is saving that. Samba's pretty good at saving penalties, and he showed why right there with Oliver Norwood's first penalty being easily saved by Bree Samba. Zinkenagel changed his mind halfway through taking his straight down the middle. It was an easy save, which meant Muset could equalize, but he didn't have the ability to do so. This meant Ryan Yates, Forrest fan born in Lincoln, went for the corner, but Olsen yet again guessed right. It was looking like there wasn't going to be too many penalties scored in this one. And in the next one from Curran Hurahan, again, Bree Samba saving. Keenan Davis had scored, of course, in the first half, but he couldn't score in the penalty shootout. So of the first six, only one had gone in. The seventh one also was saved. So Forrest, if they only scored this next one, they were through. Callum Styles slowly walked up. The Forest fans were nervous. There was fans ready to go on the pitch. Where was Styles going to hit it? He scored, and Forest were through to Wembley. Look how much it means to the entire squad. Callum Styles, Steve Cooper sprinted on the pitch faster than some of their wingers. Jed Spence in there, Worrell. Everyone was loving Callum Styles. The whole of Nottingham was absolutely loving this moment. Forrest were finally going to get a game at Wembley and it was going to be the big one with the chance at the Premier League next up for Nottingham Forest. They would be playing Reading who'd managed to destroy Middlesbrough 3-0 thanks to a Lucas Yao hat-trick in the other leg of the playoffs. So if you don't want to miss the playoff final, please do subscribe, like the video if you've enjoyed any of this. Maybe consider giving me a comment of the team selection you'd do for the final. Thank you all for watching this far. Thank you so much for watching the series. I love making it. See you soon for another video coming hopefully tomorrow. Thank you and goodbye.